If you're wondering how you can grow your impact and income online, you've come to the right show. It's Office Hours with your personal branding coach, Professor Nez. We're about to get started, so make sure you get your questions ready because you can ask me anything. So come on back. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nez Nation Live. It's so great to see you guys. Come on in, come on in. Make sure you share this out. Make sure you smash that like button and get your questions ready because this is a show. If you're brand new to this show, you happen to be watching this on the replay or you're listening to this on the podcast, this is a show that has just been such a delight over the last 18 months, especially we've been doing this show where I go live and answer your questions. You can ask me anything you want about how to advance your career, how to start and grow, perhaps your online business, maybe do a side hustle, get monetized on different platforms with your content, helping you to grow your impact and income online. It is I, Professor Nez. It's so amazing to see you guys and uh you know i i'm just really really proud of this show it's been a long time that we've been doing this i've been with you throughout the quarantine happy valentine's day holy macadamia nut it's valentine's day i professor nez will be your valentine if you don't have a valentine guess what you don't have to worry about anything because nez is yours and i can't think of a better activity Instead of spending money on chocolate and flowers, why not learn how to earn more income, grow more impact, and potentially do what you love full time? And so that's what I'm here to do. I've been in this industry for over two decades. Uh, I run several online businesses, uh, and I'm just so, 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 I'm just, and I love creating content. I absolutely love creating content for you guys. It's just so exciting. Uh, come on in, come on in. Looks like we got Sweeney Dunstan in the house. Yeah, good to see you, Sweeney. Charlie Dog made it. Yeah. Hey, Bri, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Yes, Luis. Mr. Camera Junkie is in the house. How are you doing, Luis? Come on in, come on in. Some big news um, really quickly. And if you have any uh, questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you share this out. We want as many people showing up as possible. So, uh, you know, there's there's been a lot of talk about YouTube shorts. There's been a lot of talk about TikTokers going on YouTube using YouTube shorts and Instagram, you know, instituted Instagram reels very recently and, you know, vertical video. The, the, the name of the game is vertical video. Let me know in the chat down below. Are you using vertical video? Are you not using vertical video? What is your plan? What is your... Um, do you have any plan? Are you, are you kind of over it? Are you kind of like, you know what? I don't, I don't like vertical video. I'm over it. I think it doesn't belong on YouTube. Or I really like to do kind of landscape or 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 1080, uh, uh, you know, uh, widespread uh, widescreen uh, video format. Uh, <laughs> look who's in the house. It looks like we got Mister Tom Willis. How you doing, Tom? A curious streamer over on Twitch. You know, I know it's interesting because vertical video is one of those things. It's like I, it feels really natural. I think it feels really natural to do this. I think, I think it feels more natural. Like for us content creators, business owners, etc., it may seem like, well, this feels more natural to go in landscape mode. But the majority of people, this is why these companies are doing this. The majority of people okay uh you know they feel more comfortable this is why stories and snapchat took off and just really became so popular instagram has pretty much um dominated the market share when it comes to vertical video and, and stories and TikTok really in the last year two years TikTok has really blown up to this mega platform obviously that's no news to you guys and youtube decides uh but even before youtube Instagram decides, okay, so here's our answer, big surprise. Here's our answer to TikTok. We're going to do uh, Instagram Reels. And let me know in the chat down below, is anybody really um, creating content on Instagram Reels? I'm just curious. Let me know in the hashtag, uh, use hashtag Reels if you are using Instagram Reels. And let me know why or let me know why you're not using it. Um, 
it's really interesting that uh, you see all these platforms, and now with Clubhouse, we have Facebook is thinking about stealing. Not, and I maybe I shouldn't use the word stealing, but it kind of feels like that, right? Like they're uh, Twitter spaces. And so this is sort of a common thing in the digital media, social media world. Uh, and so I'd love to get your take on it. But but getting back to what I was saying is Instagram Reels was a response to TikTok. YouTube Shorts then comes out. And if you don't know what YouTube Shorts is, it's essentially uh, you know YouTube's response to uh, TikTok. They're, they're really petrified and scared of losing that kind of Gen Z market. And TikTok really dominates. And, you know, TikTok's getting a lot older people too, like me on there uh, as well. And so it's just a real kind of message to the rest of the world that, you know, vertical video, vertical video, vertical video. And so this is, this is something that uh, is, is really, really important. And uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So here's the thing that I wanted to say. Here's the news that I wanted to share, which actually just got released. And, you know, I like to kind of share. Please leave your, your questions in the chat. You know, I like to share, uh, you know, news and, and newsworthy items and things like that. And so uh, this is really big. And so Instagram, Instagram. Yeah, very true, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. And Sweeney says, not doing reels. IG is too confusing for me. And adding another platform for me would be too much doing. Yeah, it's interesting. I think of Instagram and I think of Twitter uh, as more of conversations around my major platforms, which is YouTube, podcasting, and LinkedIn, which is where my business kind of eats, sleeps, and breathes. And so uh, I, I totally understand that. And a lot of people really think of, not to say that you can't build an audience and a brand. There's tons of creators that build amazing audiences and brands on Instagram and on Facebook and all, and all these other places. But I use more Instagram as, I really take advantage of stories. I think stories, and this is my point, vertical video, you see all these platforms going all in on vertical video. Perhaps this is something you may want to consider because I know most of us, uh, you know, we think of video and we think of really highly produced video as widescreen or horizontal or landscape mode uh, rather than portrait mode. Um, vertical video is here to stay. And there's people who are blowing up on YouTube shorts. There's people who are blowing up on TikTok and they're making a lot of money and they're funneling that traffic to different sources, their website, their business, etc. And so this is something that I've been thinking about. I started a brand new shorts channel, uh, which is separate from my main channel, this channel that you're watching right now. And so, uh, you know, I, because, you know, for two reasons, number one, I think it's important to at least experiment when there's attention going somewhere, when you see companies put a lot of R and D into a specific product or feature, um, that tells you something that tells you that this is something that maybe you need to pay attention to. And if you're a business owner like me, and also somebody who just loves creating content and loves bringing value, the medium or vehicle is not really that big of a deal. It's about where the eyeballs and earballs are. That's what it's all about. Try saying that five times in a row. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Good to see you. Find and Wanderer, how are you? Good to see you. Reels, I don't use Instagram only because of how time-consuming it is. I feel you need to spend the entire day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's interesting that you say that. Well, here's the news that I wanted to share. Let me get some water. Here's the news that I wanted to share, which is so interesting. So Instagram, because what's been happening is, is people have just been saying, okay, well, I do vertical video on TikTok. I'll just, to save time and energy, which I totally get, repurposing is a powerful thing. I'll just repurpose my content. I'll just repurpose the video onto Instagram or onto YouTube shorts. And that's been working out beautifully for a lot of people. Well, Instagram just announced that they are going to be reducing the discoverability of any repurposed videos that come from TikTok. So this is something that's interesting. I think YouTube shorts, now there's no word from YouTube yet that uh, they're going to be implementing something similar to this, but I guarantee you having known, having been experienced and seeing how Facebook and YouTube absolutely are at war with each other, 
Uh, how many of you know this or how many of you know are aware of this? We've got such an amazing, knowledgeable family here in the Nez Nation family that, you know, if you even try to embed a video on Facebook, if you even try to share a link that has YouTube anywhere, Facebook will kill it immediately. Whereas in the old days, you used to get massive traffic to YouTube from Facebook, like pre-2013, you used to be able to get a lot of traffic. You know, this is before I even started my YouTube channel, but I know my history. I think it's important to know the history of these platforms so that you don't repeat mistakes that other people have made. Hey, good to see you, Ari. Ari, all good to see you. Um, uh, so, okay, so this is a good question. I'll, I'll answer that in just a second. Thank you so much, Tom. But here's the thing. So Instagram is releasing, just release this. They're reducing discoverability. So if you try to repost or try to repurpose your content from TikTok to Instagram Reels, they're gonna absolutely kill it. This is this is the streaming wars, right? This is the platform wars. This is the social media wars. You know, YouTube, Facebook don't get along. LinkedIn, Facebook don't get along. Uh, you know, Instagram, Snapchat don't get along. TikTok, Instagram don't get along. I mean, it's it's just the ever pervasive battle, right? And I mean, these, these platforms probably could find better ways to work with each other because creators love to create on all different platforms. It's not like, you know, uh, these these platforms could find maybe better ways to work with each other. So it's really interesting. Um, but here's here's what I wanted to uh, here's what I wanted to discuss. If you have a YouTube Shorts channel. If you're on YouTube Shorts at all, okay. Oh, Ariel is Alexis. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I see you now. Good. <laughs> Hi, Ariel. Fantastic. Okay, good. Uh, if you if you have a YouTube Shorts channel, because I know a lot of creators have been doing this. If you have a YouTube Shorts channel or you're you're implementing YouTube Shorts, which you should, by the way, because anytime a platform releases a new feature. That just tells you the direction maybe they're headed in. Now, now, YouTubers, don't get afraid. Don't panic, YouTubers, because I love YouTube. I love creating my horizontal pre-production long-form content. I love it. That's not going anywhere. My point is this. I'm an early beta tester of LinkedIn Video and LinkedIn Live. I was getting tens of thousands of views on my early LinkedIn Lives when the platform released the feature. I was getting tons of views on native video. I was getting tons of views when before Facebook Live and back in 2016 when Facebook Live just started. Now I get zero reach, right? Facebook is basically pay to play. My point is this. If you want to grow, that's what this show is all about, right? Helping you grow your impact and income online. If you want to grow and maybe you're thinking, you know what? This isn't working. That isn't working. I've tried a lot of different things. Think about trying YouTube Shorts because this is a brand new feature. It's brand spanking new. And anytime a company invests that much time, energy, and money into something brand spanking new, um, that means they're going to promote it. And once your video gets on the Shorts shelf, which I'm not going to get too technical here, just try implementing some YouTube Shorts. And if you have any questions about that, I've learned a lot just from experience and on Clubhouse uh, from a lot of people who are getting a ton of traction. And so my point is this, and, and I want to take questions. Please leave your questions. If you have any questions at all, I am happy to answer them. Please leave your questions in the chat down below. So so my point is this, if you're repost, reposting TikTok content on Instagram Reels, it's going to be finished there. It's done. It's not going to go anywhere. And I know a lot of creators are reposting their TikToks on YouTube Shorts. My prediction is YouTube is going to look at what Instagram is doing. And because YouTube Shorts is a competing feature with TikTok, I guarantee you, they may not even say it overtly. They, might, they may not even announce it. Um, but I would just say as good form, make sure you upload natively to YouTube Shorts. Do not repost your TikTok content on YouTube Shorts because it's easier, it's simpler to do that, and it seems like a fast way. And actually, there's a lot of creators who've been getting major traction. I think YouTube's going to come down really, really hard on that. Let me know uh, what you think of that in the chat. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you think this? Nah, come on, man. I can repost my TikToks on YouTube Shorts and Instagram. It's going to be fine. Yeah, you know what's really interesting about Instagram, Sweeney, is I, you know, I did a live stream, you know, 
right when IGTV came out. This was like uh, 20, was it 1918 summer of, I can't even remember, but I did a live stream right when IGTV came out because I thought, first of all, I love the sound of it, IGTV. Um, I thought this is another sign that vertical video is going to be huge. Um, it had the same kind of, you know, sort of interface or a couple of distinctions similar to YouTube. Like it had a description, you could do a custom thumbnail, you could tag things like that. And I was like, Oh my God, is this, is this the tool? Is this the feature that's going to finally say, I am Instagram, hear me roar YouTube? Because YouTube is the number one video platform on earth, right? There's so many copies. Facebook, Facebook video is fantastic, and, but I just don't see it competing with YouTube. I still think in YouTube, you can monetize and make a lot of money as a Facebook creator, and there's people who consume tons of videos on Facebook, don't get me wrong, but I still think it's just far, uh, there's still a large gap between Facebook and any platform to YouTube. YouTube to me is the number one video platform. TikTok, however, you know, is coming up strong and fast, especially with vertical video. But people don't go to TikTok really to get their problems solved. Uh, it's not a search engine. It's really more of like fast ADHD, quick kind of fixes, entertainment and fun and engagement. And so, you know, people usually go to YouTube to have a very specific answer or uh, problem solved. And so um, it's it's going to be really, really interesting. But when I when I first I thought IGTV was actually going to be something powerful. I thought IGTV was actually going to be something that this is it. This is the the tool that is going to finally put Instagram on the map. I am the video platform of choice. Hear me roar. Well, how many of you are hearing about IGTV now? <laughs> How many of you uh, think IGTV is still in the game? I don't know about you, but I have not seen really any traction with uh, IGTV. I just, I just haven't at all. Uh, and so uh, it's interesting to see this. So anyway, I wanted to start off with that. If you have any questions, we got a question from Tom, a curious streamer. Please make sure you smash that smash button. Please make sure you share this out because y'all know sharing is caring. Um, let's see. Tom asks, yeah, Charlie, uh, I, I think it's gonna, I don't even know if you, I think you're talking about YouTube shorts, right? I don't know if YouTube's going to officially announce that we're going to be doing this, but I think it's smart to start now. I mean, it's not that hard to do just upload natively rather than repost. I've been seeing a lot of people. If you get that TikTok watermark, Instagram's already said, we're going to just completely kill it. I mean, when they say reduce discoverability, that's just polite way of saying, don't do it or else. Okay. Uh, and I think YouTube's going to follow suit. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either, Sweeney. I don't think there's going to be any platform that are overrun YouTube, not even close. Um, I, I, you know, it, what the beautiful thing is, is that competition, you know, actually increases innovation or necessitates innovation and competition is good for us. It's good that these companies are competing with each other because this is more opportunity for creators. And so you don't have, you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket in YouTube or IG or LinkedIn or Facebook. You have a wide, diverse uh, amount of platforms that you can experiment on, a wide, diverse amount of platforms that you can actually work with. And so um, I'm really, really excited about it. I think competition is a great thing. And so who knows? I mean, look at what look at what Patreon did. Patreon basically created this entity that says you as a YouTube creator, it's basically a knock on YouTube, not a knock, but just a an answer to YouTube, a void on YouTube. And what does YouTube do? They say, okay, we'll do our own memberships. Now, I was in a room last night with Daryl Eves and Mr. Beast, um, on uh on clubhouse and if you don't follow me on clubhouse make sure you follow me on clubhouse i just passed a thousand followers i'm very proud of that on clubhouse i, I absolutely love that app uh, i'm professor nez on clubhouse so make sure you uh, i met alexis there i met luis there i've been a lot of people who are in this chat right now and a lot of people just in general who i've been connecting with on instagram my instagram dms have been blowing up i'm sure yours have too if you've been on uh clubhouse charlie's been on there um, and so Daryl was talking about, um, how much money, you know, YouTube takes from super chats and memberships. And, uh, you know, I think he was talking to the editor of tube filter 
And he was saying that, you know, they were talking about the future of YouTube and the future, uh, what, what 2021 will entail when it comes to YouTube. And so uh, it's interesting because it's interesting because what happened is, um, you know, they're taking 30% of super chats and they're taking a large percentage of memberships. And so, um, even though YouTube has implemented these answers to Patreon, these answers to, you know, stars or, or other live stream platforms, Twitch that allow you to monetize live streams like super chats, there, there's still hope, you know, if people like as loud as Daryl Eves and Mr. Beast, who are the major players in this, in this space, if they're voicing stress or they're voicing, you know, that these are issues, which they kind of represent creators in an indirect way, they sort of do. I mean, they really pay attention to creators and help creators. Um, who knows? This this could be even bigger for us as YouTube creators. But but just to get back to the point, essentially, YouTube memberships was an answer to Patreon. So competition is good. Competition breeds innovation, and that's good for us creators. So don't get uh, wilded out by clubhouse here instagram here facebook here all these video platforms there's going to be another video platform twitch there's going to be probably another video platform like a TikTok. who knows uh you know uh, rumble no <laughs> i'm just kidding anybody on rumble let me know in the chat down below uh okay so so first question here by the way you're you know if you're just joining us you're watching Office Hours with yours truly. I'm Professor Nez, your personal branding coach. We go live every single Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you click subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. And so every time we go live, you get notified. Uh, and I want to answer this question right now. Uh, Tom says he's on Rumble. Let me know how that's going, Tom. How is, how is Rumble going? I'm curious because I know that's kind of a... A unique niche, to say the least, a unique kind of platform with a very specific audience. Um, hint, hint. Uh, so Tom says, I get notified when you're on Twitch. Is your business growing on Twitch? Um, I basically go live on Twitch just because I can. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't have any strategy for Twitch. Um, it allows me to connect. I mean, there's another couple of people who show up on my live stream from Twitch and, uh, you know, I'll just be completely honest with you. I don't have a strategy on, on Twitch. Um, to me, Twitch is such an interesting platform because my heart is in live streaming. Like I love live streaming and, uh, I know Twitch is a major, major platform for live streaming. And so I've created a channel, obviously I've created an entity there, but I'm not really seeing any traction at all, not really any business growth. And I don't really, I mean, I'm not going live right now. This isn't, this isn't a strategy for me for business growth, quote unquote. Like I was saying this in a, um, I was saying this in a, uh, a clubhouse room recently that live streaming for me, the main thing for live streaming for me is just to hang out with my community and listen. It's a listening tool for me. Um, just to hear what you guys are up to and provide as much help as I can. You know, this is uh, pretty, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, about as, as simplified a live stream as you could probably conjure because it's a live Q&A and, you know, I'm here for you and I can answer any questions that you have. And so, uh, you know, I just love hanging out with you guys every week. And for me, it's just a great way to give back. It's a great way for me to, like live streaming doesn't really grow my channel. Um, or it's not a major business accelerator. Don't get me wrong. I have very specific live streams that are intended for that. But, um, you know, as far as like growing on Twitch, uh, and I'd love your thoughts on this. If you have any strategies or help, that's what I love about our Nez Nation family is you don't just get me, who's been a content creator, business owner for over two decades, but you also get this amazing family here on Nez Nation. And so uh, if you have any tips or tricks on, on Twitch, let me know because I'm all ears. I've just been kind of quietly trying to um, quietly trying to build uh, my platform on there and build some presence, and so that's that's just what I've been uh, that's, that's just what I've been trying to do. Yeah, so I think I answered that question, uh, Tom. Thank you. Tom asks, do you think that the competition between these platforms is hurting or helping each uh, platform? Well, no, I don't think that it's I don't think that it's helping the platforms, but it's certainly helping the creators. 
Um, obviously, you know, Instagram and Facebook are threatened by TikTok. Obviously, YouTube is threatened by TikTok, right? I mean, TikTok is stealing. Uh, I mean, not stealing, but I mean, that's a strong word. But what I'm saying is, is they're taking a large percentage of the Gen Z younger millennial market share uh, away from these other platforms. I mean, Clubhouse, Clubhouse is another platform uh, where, you know, podcasting, I think, is going to be threatened by Clubhouse. I mean, how many people in the chat down below, how many people in the chat have listened to far less podcasts since Clubhouse came out? I know I have. I'm numero uno. I have listened to far less podcasts than I used to. I mean, you know, when I listen to podcasts, it's usually either in the car driving, which I'm not doing a lot of these days, or my favorite thing to do is to listen to like Joe Rogan or somebody like that, who I'm subscribed to, you know, in the morning when I'm getting prepared for my day, I'm getting my emails, checking client calls, scheduling, organizing, etc., answering all, you know, questions. Um, I love to listen to podcasts. Well, now I'm just putting on, on Clubhouse, you know, and I can, and I, and, and you can just listen. You don't even have to be a part of the room. You can just listen in the background, get some great knowledge. And, you know, it's passive listening, just like podcast is sort of, podcasting is sort of passive listening. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. Yeah, Tom, if you get on Clubhouse, come, uh, come hang out with us. We talk a lot about the same thing. Alexis, <laughs> Alexis is on Clubhouse a lot. Yes. Tina says she's on Rumble. How do you like Rumble, Tina? Do you like that? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Charlie Dog says, let's get ready to Rumble. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, George. Good to see you, brother. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. What do you guys have planned for uh, Valentine's Day? Any plans for Valentine's Day? Um, you know, my, my, my wife and I, obviously we're just going to do stuff with the family and hang out together. Okay. We got a question from Alexis, um, tips on balancing a professional account and personal lifestyle account. I want to try both. So I have social media presence for network connections and one for friends and community. Okay. This is a really interesting question. I love this. Um, you know, the beautiful thing is, uh, Alexis is that you have, um, you have different audience types and different audience expectations on different platforms. I mean, I do my kind of friends and personal stuff on Facebook and Instagram, even though Instagram is kind of businessy, you know, it, it, it is a business account and even Facebook too, but my, my personal profile for all my friends and lifestyle stuff. Um, but here's the thing. I have a question for you. Um, why do you feel that you even need to separate the two? Um, and, and let me, and just hear me out because I think my initial response was going to be, this is a great question. Thank you, Alexis. This is a fantastic question. My, and I'd love to hear from you from the chat. Anybody have any good uh, answers for this? Leave, uh, leave your responses in the chat down below. My initial response to this was going to be, well, you have LinkedIn for your professional, and then you have, you know, you have your Facebook and Instagram or Snapchat for your personal. And so just separate them that way. Like I don't post hardly any of the personal stuff. 99% of the personal stuff I post on my Facebook or, or my personal accounts, I never post that to LinkedIn, right? Usually LinkedIn has a different audience expectation. Uh, my YouTube channel I and my Instagram account even though I, I kind of love, you know, I use them for business, but it's not, I don't think of it as a businessy thing. It's more like, I just love creating value and building community and creating content that helps. And I don't mind sharing some personal stuff about me in the community tab, or, you know, I'll share screenshots of me hanging out on clubhouse with some great creators, or just to keep the conversation going and ask them how they're doing. And this is what I'm up to and behind the scenes stuff, but I don't really do that on LinkedIn and LinkedIn stories is something that I've been kind of experimenting with. But, um, for me, it's really just about, you know, different platforms, different audiences and LinkedIn for me is my professional kind of, um, stream, if you will, or prof professional thread. Whereas, uh, Facebook and Instagram and all these other places are more like personal. And so I just separate it kind of naturally that way. Uh, but I'd love to hear from other people. Like, what do you guys think about this is such a great question. Um, I want to try to both, uh, I want to try both. So I have a social media presence for network connections and one for friends and community. And here's another thing too. 
um, you know, these social media platforms kind of already do this for you. They kind of already have built their own in their own audiences. Like LinkedIn over the last 15 years has built this amazing professional audience, whereas Instagram and Facebook have built this kind of fun, looser, more personal lifestyle, if you will, type of audience. So the platforms have kind of already done that for you. Now, here's my suggestion. Don't be afraid to show other sides of yourself to your professional accounts as well. Because one of the things that I think that a lot of people do on LinkedIn, which I think hurts them, is they're a little bit too stuffy and a little bit too all about business. Um, there's nothing wrong with showing different sides of yourself um, as long as it's appropriate, right? You don't want to show yourself maybe in a tank top, you know, uh, uh, you know, running around, you know, getting drunk with your friends like maybe you would on Snapchat or on, you know, Facebook or Instagram. But but don't be afraid to show your vulnerabilities. Don't be afraid to show your own challenges. Don't be afraid to show how you reward yourself after a hard day's work. You know, I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with that. People connect with people. They don't connect with your credentials. They don't connect with a piece of paper or a resume or a diploma or a degree. They connect with human beings. The more human you are, I think the stronger connection you're going to have. That's another reason why I love doing this live stream. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, um, uh, Alexis, it's so great to have you here. It's been such a pleasure. Another amazing amazing creator and professional who I met on Clubhouse, who I met on Clubhouse, just really fantastic human being. And I just love it. Luis, if you're still here, I know camera, Mr. Camera Junkie met him on Clubhouse as well. I absolutely love this platform Clubhouse. And I'm going to be hosting a lot of rooms in the near future. Uh, I already hosted a bunch and I'm going to keep hosting more because I get so much value. So make sure you follow me on Clubhouse. Okay. My handle on Clubhouse is pretty much the same, pretty much the same everywhere. Uh, I wonder where Joe is. Joe's probably hanging out with his family. But uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much the same on every platform. And so, uh, you know, I'm Professor Naz on Clubhouse as well. So make sure that you uh, connect with me uh, on Clubhouse because uh, I'm going to be hosting a ton of rooms in the, you know, uh, every single, every single week, ton of rooms. I mean, I, I want to help as much as possible. And I love that community there. And it's just such a powerful place to connect with people like you, new people, old people, friends, family, everybody. And so make sure you connect with me on Clubhouse. I'm Professor Nez uh, right there. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question, Alexis. That's a really, really great question. Hey, if you're just joining us, uh, just just to remind you, you're watching Office Hours with yours truly, your personal branding coach, helping you to grow your impact and income online. Every single week we go live, every Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's Valentine's Day, and happy Valentine's Day to all you beautiful people. Happy Valentine's Day to the Nez Nation family, and so fantastic. Anna, good to see you from Georgia, Tbilisi. Georgia, great to see you, Anna. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please make sure that you leave them in the comments down below. I will get to all your questions. We usually go live for about an hour. Um, I have been known to go over, <laughs> way over, but uh, today is a special day, and so I really have to make sure that, uh, so we're probably going to go live for another 30, 35 minutes or so, so please make sure that you leave your questions in the comments down below. I want to try to answer as many questions as I can, and don't forget... If you're watching this live or if you're watching this on the replay or, or what have you, we have a number one rated personal branding podcast on Apple and Spotify. And that is the logo right there. It's personal branding 101 with yours truly, Professor Nez, me. <laughs> Start, sorry to talk about myself in the third person. If you like, you know, to me, I, I kind of refer to it as a free university in your eardrums. And so, uh, you know, it's literally like, if you're like me and you love listening to podcasts, although Clubhouse has kind of disrupted that a little bit, it's going to be interesting to see what these podcast platforms, how they respond. Um, Facebook is already releasing. What do you guys think of this, by the way? Let me just throw this out there. Thank you, Bri. It's so great to see you. It's always good to see you, my friend. Fantastic creator, fantastic mind and soul. I, I, I just really, really appreciate you. What do you guys think of Twitter and Facebook 
um, coming out with their own version of Clubhouse? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know in the chat. Do you think that's a good thing, a bad thing? Uh, and why do you why do you think so? And so um, let me let me actually kind of show you if you're not sure what I'm talking about. So so you know Twitter Twitter has really been late to the game in my opinion. Um, they really haven't. Um, I don't know. They they've been late to the game in a lot of ways, and so uh, it's really interesting to see. Uh, let me just share the screen real fast. Let me know if you can see that. So Twitter is about to re release um, this new, you know, basically format called Twitter Spaces. Okay, Twitter Spaces is a place to come together. I'm on the Twitter um, help page, help center page, uh, and basically, I th I think it hasn't come out. It it hasn't rolled out to everybody yet. So it says here we initially. Are rolling out spaces to a very small group to learn like they always do it's in beta uh you can start a space in two ways and so yeah so this is basically an answer to clubhouse and facebook is doing the same thing uh and so this is this is something that's really i mean it's yeah we shouldn't be surprised we shouldn't be surprised at all but here's the thing that i think why and and look look uh, this is what i love about our nez nation family alexa's already called it this is why i think this is going to be really bad news for clubhouse is that you already have a built-in audience and people already have built-in audiences and followers and communities on facebook and on uh uh, uh twitter and so look at this comment by alexis because you just literally you just beat me to the punch thank you so much alexis i think twitter spaces might be competition because people already have their network established exactly that's exactly correct and so um that's going to be interesting to see and uh you know uh, the the point of the matter is and, and this is why i think clubhouse is so popular the reason that, I mean, Clubhouse is nothing more. Think about this, guys. Clubhouse is nothing more than just a audio Zoom call. That's literally all it is. But here's the thing. This is why Clubhouse is popular. They've taken all the work out of it. Like, I mean, I have a perfect case study for this. Like, literally, I have a perfect case study to this. Nobody wants to organize meetings. Nobody wants to set it up. Nobody wants to run it. Nobody wants to get everybody's okay what time can you meet what day can you meet okay let's get in a thread let's get on slack let's get in a a text a group text it's just work it's work clubhouse has taken all the work out of it you just open your app you show up in a room boom you're there it's all set up convenience sells y'all taking the friction out of connection that's Clubhouse. That should be Clubhouse's motto. I mean, if they hired me, <laughs> hey, Clubhouse, if you're listening, taking the friction out of connection. That's literally what they've done. It's nothing more than a Zoom call. It's an audio Zoom call. That's all it is. But you try getting 10 of your friends, uh, 20 of your friends together to show up at the same time, same place, da, 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 da. It's an absolute nightmare. And they've also taken out the beautiful kind of... Um, They've just done so many things right, like like people who are self-conscious about how they look, people who are self-conscious about, you know, their presentation and their physical appearance. They've taken that out of the equation. Plus, um, there's discoverability too, right? So they put the social element in there, the news feed, the algorithm. Um, if you start a room on personal branding or you start a room on mindset or YouTube content creation, anybody who's had prior interests in those kind of topics, it's going to show up on the main feed and you can join, right? Uh, it's just taken, it's just done everything right. Now, um, I, it'll be interesting to see. I, I personally believe, this is my thought, I personally believe that and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Anthony, great to see you. Anthony in the house on LinkedIn. I personally believe that um, Clubhouse may be in trouble once the pandemic really finally kind of feels like it's close to over. And it will. I mean, the pandemic will come to an end eventually. I actually think maybe Q4, to be realistic, 
A lot of people are saying by summer. I think that might not be realistic. I think things are going to, things are already trending in the right, knock on wood. Oh my God, I hate this thing. I want it to be over like yesterday. Um, but look at this innovation. So in the, in a time of crisis an innovation has sprouted up like clubhouse, the reason that clubhouse is so important in, and so popular is because we're all stuck at home. We can't go out and socialize. We can't go to conferences. We can't go to summits. We can't go to meetups. That's why it's so popular, right? My prediction is that once people are able to go to conferences, events, once people are able to socialize, go out a lot more. Now, I'm not saying there's a lot of places you can go out, but just go out freely and not have to have any anxiety or worry about catching this thing. Um, I think that may spell trouble for Clubhouse. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat down below. What do you guys think? Louise says, Twitter's audience is completely different. Yes. Um, Bry says it opens you up to new people instead of only being people in your bubble because of clubhouse. I found people like, yeah, man, that's a great point, Brian. I love the way you said that. That's exactly what it is, Tom. Tom, that is exactly what it is. It's literally the audio version of blab. Now blab, I literally came in the game two seconds to blab's death. I mean, I literally came in the game when blab was still around but Blab was about to be on its way out. And that's what a lot of people are comparing Clubhouse to is Blab. Uh, and if you don't know what Blab is, Blab was this live streaming platform where you could just join rooms. They would have all these rooms where people were live streaming and different topics and what have you. And you could just pop in, but it was video. It was video. Clubhouse is basically that version, but audio only. So really, really, that's, that's amazing. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and well, here's another thing too, that I think is a problem. Here's a, another thing that I think is a problem for Clubhouse. Okay. Hey, how you doing worlds? Worlds. People have been enjoying audio content. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Uh, Anna says Clubhouse should be surprisingly interesting in nineties. We had a problem with telephone lines. Interesting. Trying to call these big rooms. Question, which platform is the most underrated platform right now? Oh, thank you, Anna. I'm going to get to that question in just a second. Uh, I absolutely love that question. Anna, stick around. I'm going to get to that question right now. Uh, but, but really quickly, one thing. Here's another problem. Because <clears throat> what if Luis just said, Luis, excuse me, <clears throat> Luis just said something very powerful. I don't think spaces will have the same exclusivity as uh, Clubhouse. Okay, here's another problem for Clubhouse. It's only on iPhone right now. And so, you know, you've got, uh, you know, uh, exclusivity. You've got a sense of scarcity. You've got a sense of, you know, you know, we, we got in first, right? That whole kind of vibe. There's no doubt, and the Clubhouse has already mentioned this, that they're, they're working on a deal with, uh, they're, they're already looking for audio uh, um, Android uh, engineers right now. There's no doubt that uh, Clubhouse is going to have the Android users come in on the party. Now, here's another prediction because we're already kind of seeing rooms that are just getting kind of out of control and rooms that, you know, we're already seeing a lot of drama and some people are saying there's some toxicity in some of the rooms and people are being mistreated or treated poorly by moderators, what have you. Can you imagine when the avalanche of Android, I don't even, I, no, no alliteration intended there, the avalanche of Android, once that gets into the mix, can you imagine? What do you think is going to happen when Android gets access to Clubhouse? You know what? I'm going I'm to pose that question right now, and uh, I want you guys to answer that. What do you think is going to happen when Android gets access to Clubhouse? I want you guys to answer that question for me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And then Anna, don't go anywhere. I'm going to, uh, uh, oh, I didn't put a question mark at the end of that. Sorry. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. What do you think is going to happen when Android gets access to Clubhouse? What do you think is going to happen? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I truly believe that once Android gets in there, you're going to start seeing, 
the 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 whole dynamic of the platform is going to change. I think what made Clubhouse work was the scarcity, was the exclusivity, and it'll be interesting to see how they adapt to that because more is not always better. In my view and in my experience, I think less is always more. So it's going to be interesting to see. I, I want to hear some uh, answers to this question right here. Luis, Clubhouse can add Android devices, but if they keep the invite-only aspect, it will still have that exclusivity factor. Okay, cool. Keeping the invite-only. Yeah, very nice. Very interesting. But there's got to be hacks around that, right? There's probably going to be a lot of hacks around that. I mean, I've already seen YouTube videos where people say, get on Clubhouse without an invite. So I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting, Luis. I wonder if that's going to be something that is just easy to to overcome or easy to circumvent. By the way, if you're just joining us, you're watching Office Hours with yours truly, uh, your personal branding coach. I am Professor Nez, and I am here to answer any question you have about how to earn more, grow faster, and stress less, helping you to, ins hopefully inspiring you to grow your impact and income online. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you share this out and hit that like button. I'd really, really appreciate it. It would really, really help us out. Uh, Alexis said they should still have the app be invite only when they allow Android users. Okay, so so it sounds to me like most people are saying as long as that invite only concept sticks around, then maybe perhaps, uh, you know, it might still have that kind of same dynamic. I hope you're right. I really, truly, truly hope you're right. Okay, Anna, I want to get to your question. And by the way, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. We're having an amazing conversation here. Keep the chat going. Keep the conversation going. Uh, Anna says, what platform is the most underrated platform right now for your point of view? Um, well, I mean, I think the most underrated platform is the one that gets the most attention and the most uh, buzz, and that's Clubhouse. Uh, I still think there's people who don't, uh, they think it's, it's, it's ridiculous. They think it's just, which it is, it can be. So I've heard some of my colleagues say, yeah, you know, Clubhouse is cool, but it just seems like everybody's there to hear themselves talk and stroke their own egos. I've been in a lot of rooms like that. <clears throat> I've been in a ton of rooms like that. So I know exactly where they're coming from. Yes, it can feel like that. And I've done an entire video on my YouTube channel on how to really navigate the app appropriately. If you want to go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Professor Nez, I've got some videos in a playlist where you can actually, uh, as a matter of fact, I might find one and just put the put it in the link here. Or Anna, just DM me, just direct message me on LinkedIn and I'll send you a link to that. But um, it also depends on what's your objective, like what's your goal? What do you... Um, What's your, like, what, what is the, what is the point of you, you know, building on a platform? What's your goal for the platform? Like uh, different platforms really relate to different goals and objectives. And so it's really important to understand what your purpose is, uh, what is your goal? And then really we can figure out which platform is best for you and which platform is underrated. And if you want to answer that, if you're still here, um, what is it that you're hoping to achieve? That's probably a better question. What is it that you're hoping to achieve? And then I can help you decide on what platform you should be on, I think, in my opinion. You're absolutely welcome. Bry says, I think they should keep the invite only because when Facebook and other companies do the same thing, at least you know that Clubhouse could be a place where people with like-minded ideas will go to. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I like the way you said that. I love that. That's fantastic. Uh, Alexis says, I feel like once it's open to all, regardless, it will definitely change. I, com I could not agree more. I could not agree more. I absolutely love that. Bry says, it's all about the people. If you follow people who are toxic, then you're going to end up toxic. Yes. Boy, we got some experienced clubhousers. What do we call ourselves, by the way? We have YouTubers, we've got TikTokers, we've got... <laughs> what do we call the, the clubhousers? Do we call them clubhousers? Clubbers? What do we call them? We can't call them clubbers. That's like a 90s term for people who went to raves. I'm old enough, trust me. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, Louise says the ego stroking will also let you know who's genuine. Yeah, you can't hide... That's what I love about Clubhouse is, um, you know, what I love about, uh, about Clubhouse is that, um, you know, you can't, you can't uh, filter, you can't uh, Photoshop, you can't edit. It's raw in the moment. 
There's no replay. And so I just, I think it's, I think it's really fantastic. Uh, Anna, it says here you're, you're planning to launch a personal brand. Well, what do you, what is the, what is the purpose of that personal brand? What do you want to, why do you want to launch a personal brand? You say, I want to, I want to really get deeper. I want to get deeper here. So I want to try to help you as much as I can. So you're asking me, what's the most underrated platform? And then I said, well, it depends on what your objective is. And you said you're planning to launch a personal brand. I want to go a little bit deeper. What does that mean? What do you want to get out of building and launching a personal brand? What's your end goal, basically? Uh, and I'm happy to answer that. Thank you so much, Anna. House sitters. <laughs> Charlie, what in the world? House sitters. <laughs> That sounds great. Clubhousers. I kind of like clubhousers. Clubhouser sounds good. Yay, Luis, tech for your needs is in the house. Now I got to I gotta do Luis 1 and Luis 2 now. How you doing, Luis? Good to see you from tech for your needs. Great to see you. Fantastic. Uh, it's awesome. Awesome to see you. It looks like, uh, you know, Luis, did you go hang out with, uh, with the other Luis on his live stream or something like that? Or was it on Clubhouse? Great to see you guys, man. You two should definitely connect. I see a lot of similarities besides your names. And so it's great to see you, Tech for Your Needs. Love it. Fantastic. Good to see it. Okay, Anna says, my end goal is to create some value for youth. Okay, in what way? Can you be more specific? Like you want to help them get jobs. You want to help them with their mental state. You want to help them to um, discover more about who they are. Uh, you want to help them, uh, you want to help them, um, I don't know, fill out a, a, a college, uh, you know, application. What exactly do you want to do for the youth? You see what I'm doing here? This is the same thing I do with my clients. It's important if you want to really get to the root of how you can build your brand, how you can build your influence, how you can grow your impact and income online. You got to be specific. You want to be very, very specific, right? And so um, this is fantastic. I love this. I, it's a great purpose uh, that you want to uh, create some value for the youth. I just want to get a little bit more specific so I can kind of know like, what does that exactly mean? Like you want to create more value for the youth. I would love to hear, I would love to hear more about that. So, so let me know in the chat because I'm here and uh, I would love to, I would love to figure that out. Like what kind of value is it the youth from your own country? Is it the youth in your own community? Is it just all youth? Uh, what exactly does that mean? I want to figure out and, and, and get uh, more youth. Please let me know. Okay, Anna. Bryce says, I like Clubhouse because when you let people speak for long periods of time, they will tell you who they truly are and what their true intentions. Yes. Yeah, you can't mask who you really are on that app, which is really, really cool. Uh, so it's it's really, really fantastic. I, I think that's fantastic. House sitters. Charlie, you can do better than that for crying out loud. Uh, <laughs> okay, Anna says, I'm trying to figure out now which aspect can be most useful for them taking into account my capabilities. Yeah, so you're doing the right thing. This is about searching. Like, it's not about doing what you love. It's not about doing, you know, it's not about you. It's where are you the most able to bring impact? And hopefully, if you're really, really good at something, hopefully that purpose will transcend and translate, I'm sorry, not transcend, translate into real joy. Because purpose lasts longer than happiness. Purpose lasts longer than doing what you love. When you do what you were meant to do, like I truly feel I was put on this planet to help people, inspire people, to get themselves out of their own way and really communicate their story so they can do something that, that gives them purpose. And basically just sharing my experiences. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't just call myself Professor Nez for no reason, even though it's my brand. I actually have been teaching business communications at universities for a very, very long time. And so I love, I don't even call it teaching. I hate that word teaching. It's more like if I don't inspire you, I'm not doing my job because anybody can teach, but the people who inspire you are the ones who really lift you in powerful ways. And so I want to be a lifter, not just a teacher. And so I hope that makes sense. Uh, and so, um, fantastic. Oh, I didn't know that, Luis. I didn't know your nickname was Nano. Can I call you Nano? That's fantastic. <laughs> Clubhouse lurkers. That's probably more appropriate for you, Charlie, not the majority. Uh, Anna says, I have a background of 15 years in marketing, creating value for consumers. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. 
Now we're getting uh, specific. Luis, let me know if I can call you Nano. I love that. That's a cool nickname. Um, so this is really, really important, Anna, because I love this. So you have a background, 15 years in marketing, creating value for consumers. So if this is something that you're really, really good at, and you've been doing this for a really, really long time, um, there's a lot of young people who have zero clue about how to create value that can lead to sales and customers or with their content because marketing is such a broad thing, but it's such an essential thing, not just for content creators, not just for YouTubers, not just for podcasters, live streamers, not just for businesses, not just for, uh, you know, uh, self-employed, but also for people who are looking for employment right? People who are looking to grow their influence in their industry, people who are looking to establish their thought leadership so they can get promoted. Um, there's a lot of professionals. And this is something that's so important, Anna, because nobody's teaching them this stuff in school. Like nobody's teaching them this stuff in school. Um, I worked at the marketing department for a state university for five years. And uh, I, I recently left them because I just couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, I'm not going to name the school. No, no need to name it. It's pretty much every school. It's pretty much just like every other school. Um, the teachers and professors knew nothing about current marketing trends. Um, they didn't care. They were teaching out of a book. It was a hundred year old model. They were teaching marketing from 1966 uh, and principles of marketing from 1966. And it broke my heart. Like if you're a teacher, I don't care if you're a professor, a teacher, high school, um, whatever. If you're a teacher teaching business or communications or writing or sociology or psychology and you're not on Clubhouse right now and you're not at least investigating and, and, and taking an interest in the power of Clubhouse, you're doing your students a major disservice, major disservice. And I mean that like with every fiber of my being. Every single one of you teachers and professors and university instructors, if you're teaching anything at all related to marketing, business, sales, communication, and you're not on Clubhouse, at least trying to be a part of the conversation, you're doing your students a disservice. Because this has been the, the most amazing platform for connectivity. I mean, it just is. Uh, and so, Anna, I hope that makes sense. I mean, you have very powerful skills, okay? You have very powerful, 15 years of marketing is beautiful. Um, you know, what I would do is <clears throat> to answer your question more specifically about platforms, you're on the right platform. You're on LinkedIn. That's a great place to create value. Maybe do a podcast because audio in Clubhouse, you know, is really, really big. Uh, and, you know, helping to share your expertise and share your multifaceted skill sets in marketing so that, you know, your demographic can get a lot of value from it. Uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. I mean, there's not really one platform over the other, but I would say you're on the right platform right now, LinkedIn, to really establish your authority uh, and get your message out there. You can create videos, uh, infographs, articles, uh, text posts, audio posts. You can do a ton of stuff on the platform that you're already on. And by the way, if you'd, if you'd send me a message, I'll send you some links to videos that will help you a little bit more deeper on building a personal brand. And so I'm happy to send those videos to you. Just send me a, send me a direct message. Okay, Anna. Walter Weyburn in the house. Sorry, professor, I'm late, but my dog ate my homework. I've never heard that before. Thanks, Walter. Good to see you. You get a pass this time. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Luis. I appreciate it. Nano. Nano in the house. Yes, Nano. Oh, just got home from church. Fantastic. Great to see you, brother. If you're just joining us, thank you so much, Walter. It's always a pleasure. You're watching Office Hours with yours truly, your personal branding coach. I am Professor Nez, helping you to grow your impact and income online. We go live every single Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can ask me anything. Uh, I said that we were going to go for an hour. It is reaching the hour mark, but uh, I want to stick around because we got some new people in the house. Uh, if you have any questions... If you have any uh, at all, I can take a few more. And then because it is Valentine's Day and happy Valentine's Day to all of you, my wonderful, beautiful Nez Nation family, 
Uh, I would love to, uh, you know, answer a few more questions if you have any. And just to kind of reiterate, please make sure that you click that uh, like button, hit that like button, make sure you click subscribe, uh, hit the bell notification if you're on YouTube, follow me on LinkedIn, uh, and make sure you subscribe to our podcast. We have an amazing podcast on Spotify and Apple. It's like a free university, a free branding business university in your eardrums. It's all free. You don't have to do anything. So make sure you go check that out. I would really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'm happy to take any more questions if you will. Um, anybody going to be hosting a room? I might host a room. Um, well, actually, no, it's Valentine's Day. I, was, I, I, have, I have a lot of stuff to do. But I might host a late night room on Clubhouse tonight. So if you're around on Clubhouse, again, follow me on Clubhouse. I am Professor Nez. Let me see if I can find that comment. I am Professor Nez on Clubhouse. So make sure that you follow me uh, on Clubhouse. And if you're an iOS user, obviously, uh, make sure that you um, can hang out with us. Hey, the Petit Pescatarian, good to see you. How are you? Is that Kylie? Yes, Kylie is in the house. So if you if you want to follow me on Clubhouse, Ky I met Kylie. I, I believe it's Kylie. I could be wrong. But the Petit Pescatarian, I love that name, by the way. That's a great name for your channel. Uh, you know what? Honestly, uh, I'm not really sure. I got to see what's going on with the family. But probably later evening, I'm on the West Coast Pacific time, so probably around 6 or 7 p.m. But don't quote me on that because I might not be able to get to it. But yeah, uh, I'm really, really excited. I, I'm going to be hosting tons of rooms this week, so don't worry about it. Uh, and uh, talking a lot about branding, YouTube. I like to talk a lot about YouTube because I'm really obsessed with YouTube uh, and how to grow with content creation. Uh, so make sure that you follow me on Clubhouse. Thank you so much. It's great to see you. Make sure you smash that smash button. Anybody else have any last second questions, any comments, anything at all? I can take a couple more questions here and then I'm going to wrap it up. You're watching Office Hours. We go live every Sunday. I love, love, love hanging out with you guys. I love, love just really just having fun hopefully answering your questions. If you have any questions, uh, you know, we're going to get some awesome guests on too. You know, we, our last guest was Daryl Eves, basically the YouTube master. He's got a new book coming out that I'm really, really excited about getting. So we are going to have more guests as well on the live stream show. And, uh, but you know, you can always count on Sundays, 9 30 AM Pacific, 12 30 PM Eastern time because that is when we go live every single Sunday. The best community on planet Earth. Literally the best community. Yeah, you know, it, just to wrap up really quickly, if you're just joining us on the live stream, Walter, uh, and a lot of other people too. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Petite uh, 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 pescatarian. Yeah, so, so Walter, if you're just joining us, just to wrap up, we talked a lot about defining what it is that you want and where you should build the personal brand. Thank you, Anna. And we also talked a lot about um, some updates on Instagram Reels, uh, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. And then we also talked a lot about Clubhouse. I mean, we've been talking a ton about Clubhouse. And so, um, yeah, really, really exciting stuff. So if you're just kind of joining us or maybe you're listening to the tail end of this, Make sure you watch the replay because the replay is on fire, okay? All right, guys. Well, hey, I love you, love you, love you, love you more than I can ever, ever, uh, ever, ever say. I wish you guys nothing but the best. Have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with us this Valentine's Day. I'm going to leave a lot of links in the description if you want to go deeper with me, learn more about some other things, other ways in which you can take your brand, you can take your business, you can take your career to the next level. So make sure you click out, uh, click out, <laughs> make sure you click out. <laughs> Is that a word? Make sure you check out the links uh, in the description and the show notes. I absolutely, absolutely adore you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys on Clubhouse, and I'll definitely see you here next Sunday. Love y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.